Good morning. <laughs> oh, I like it when you guys keep the rules. Nice and quiet. Paying attention. All right, let's start with prayer. All right, close your eyes, hands together. All right, we're going to talk to God now. So we don't want to be distracted, don't want to be talking or moving. All right, dear Lord, thank you for gathering us here. We thank you that we can learn about King David this morning. And uh, Lord, he did great things, but he also be made big mistakes. But we can learn from him. Even when we make mistakes, if we humble ourselves, we can still be used by you, Lord. So um, thank you for the example of David. And I pray, Lord, that you help the children to have fun today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Say amen. amen. Yeah, great. Amen means you agree and you pray. And when we say amen at the end, when everyone says amen, they say I agree with what is prayed. Okay, three rules. Sit quietly. Pay attention. What's the last one? Yeah, it's one of them. I mean, you did it. You put your hand up when you wanted to say something. Good. See, so you know the practice. Maybe you don't know how to say it. Put your hand up if you want to say something. Okay, so to, today we're going to be combining two books. Book number 10 is 2 Samuel, the Bible, but also book number 14 is called 1 Chronicles. So I put them together because these two books really tell us about the life of King David. Okay, so 1 Chronicles ends with the death of Saul, like we learned last week, and then we go into David. Same with 2 Samuel. So we're going to do these two books together as we learn about King David today. Now who's this? Who do you think this is? Timothy. Goliath. Ah, you know his story. See, one of the famous stories about David when he was younger, before he was king, is he fought the giant Goliath. So if you know a bit about that story, the Israelites were fighting against the Philistines and they sent out a giant called Goliath. So instead of everyone fighting each other, they thought, well, we're just going to have one person fight another person and whoever wins that battle is the winner of the war. So they send out their biggest, baddest, ugliest, I don't know if he was ugly, strongest man, his name was Goliath. And look at the normal guys. There's so much. So he's holding his shield. Look how big his shield and his spear was compared to normal sized people. So that's why he was called Goliath. Goliath. So Goliath was the name of this giant. And he said, Send out a man to fight me. And he was cursing the Israelites and he was, you know, basically taunting them. So David came to bring some food for his, his brothers at the wall. And he saw this giant saying all these things against the people of God, and he asked King Saul, hey, what's, who's going to, well, who, what are they doing about this guy who's defying the armies of, of God? And they said, well, whoever beats this Philistine will be promoted in the kingdom of Israel, you know, by Saul. So David says, you know what, I've fought a bear and I've fought a lion before, and you know what, this giant's going to be like one of them. So they tried to give him some armour, and he didn't take the armour. I know I'm going over the story quite quickly. Simon's quite familiar with this story. And then how many stones did he get at the brook, Simon? Five stones. Got five smooth stones, and then he went up against the giant. And when he went up against the giant, the giant said, Am I a dog that you come to me with staves? And what did David say? Hey, maybe you come with sword and shield and spear, but I come to you in the name of God. All right? So when he ran towards the Philistine, what did he do? He took one stone out of his pouch, out of the five, and with his sling, he slung it at, the, at Goliath. Here's the stone. And what happened? Killed him, didn't it? Went into his head. Headshot. And Goliath is an example. It doesn't matter how big and strong you are. If you go up against God, you're going to lose. So whose side do you want to be on when you're in a fight? Do you want to be on God's side? Or do you want to be on Goliath's side? What do you think, Mateo? God's side. That's right. 
So Goliath was made an example of when you defy God. So see, there's the stone in his head, he's dead. And what happened? David took his sword and then he cut his head off. Cut his head off as an example to all the men here. Hey, if you go up against God, that's what's going to happen to you. Right? So we want to make sure we're on God's side, not on the, uh, the enemies of God's side. So that's the earlier story with David against Goliath. So it doesn't matter how small you are. If you're on the right side, you can win big battles and you don't have to worry about the enemies of God. God will make an example of them. Now when David became king, I don't think David would have had long hair, so it's not a, necessarily a picture of him. But when everyone was going out to war, so this is many years later. Now this is in the book of 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles. David's now king, because remember when the kingdom was taken from Saul, remember last week when he didn't obey God? He didn't obey God, so the kingdom was taken from him and it was given to another man, King David. So now the time when kings go to war, so this was another war. This is a war when Saul was king, but David fought Goliath when he was younger. Now David is king, and this was a time when kings were meant to go to war. But instead of David doing what he should be and getting into the fight, what did he do? He was at home, being idle, being lazy, right? doing nothing, just around his house, wandering around. And when he looked out the window of his palace, you know what he saw? He saw a lady that was very beautiful. She was washing herself. And that, but she was a wife of somebody else. So when it comes to David and Goliath, David had a great victory. But here we learn about one of the big sins of David. So even though this lady was somebody else's wife, he took this lady and they slept together. They committed adultery. Big sin. And the husband of this lady was actually one of his captains, one of the people that worked for David. So this was terrible. This was a terrible sin. So after they were together, they had a baby. But David wanted to cover it up. He wanted to cover up the fact that he had slept with somebody else's wife. He had committed this really bad sin. So what did he do? He had this man, the husband of this woman that he slept with, sent into a battle. And then he told his captain, when you send him into the hottest part of the battle where the archers are, I want you to pull all your men back. So Uriah, who was the husband of Bathsheba, the lady that David had committed adultery with, he was sent all the way up to the tower where the archers were. And then Joab, the captain, pulled back all the men. So Uriah died. What a terrible thing that David did, didn't he? He slept, he committed adultery with Uriah's wife, and then he had the man killed in order to try to cover up that adultery. Now, he tried to hide it from everybody, that sin. Do you think God let him hide that sin? No. So what did God do? God sent his prophet Nathan to go talk to David, to confront him, and said, you have done this terrible sin. You've taken somebody else's wife, and not only that, but you had him killed in battle. Now, what do you think David's response was? Do you remember when Saul was confronted by Samuel? What did Saul do? Saul justified himself. He said, but I haven't done anything wrong. I spared the sheep to offer to God. David was very different. When David was confronted by Nathan, he said, thou art the man. David admitted his fault. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. And he repented of that sin. So that's not how he got saved. David was a saved man. But he did very, very wrong. But because he humbled himself and he admitted his fault, God put away his sin. You know, he, 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 he had consequences for the sin because the baby that was born of Bathsheba and David, that baby died because of what David had did, done. But then God did not take away the kingdom from David like he did with Saul, when Saul disobeyed. 
So we see from the example of David that even though God used David to do great things, David wasn't perfect. David had some big sins. But does that mean God was done with David? No. God could still use David because David humbled himself. He repented of that sin. He confessed his sin to God and God was pleased with how he reacted even though he had done something very bad. So as he got older, David got older, God used, still was using him as a righteous king. And David saw in his heart he wanted to build a house for God. See, before the tabernacle of God was in the tent, remember that tent when we, when we learned about the Levitical priesthood and the burnt sacrifices? So God's tabernacle was in, when it was in a tent and, God, and David thought, you know what, I dwell in this nice house of cedar trees he said, I'm going to build a house for God. But you know what God said to him? God said, you know, you're not going to build a house for me. There's going to be somebody that's going to come after you. They're going to build a house for me. Now David misunderstood that, and he thought that it meant that Solomon was going to build a house for God. So David got all the plans together of how the house was going to be built, and then he commanded his son Solomon to build that house. But he actually misunderstood God because the person who was going to build that real house was Jesus. So we see here in 2 Samuel where God tells David that God's son later on, somebody who he's going to raise up, is actually going to build the house. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 13. He shall build an house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Do you want to read that together? You ready? 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 13. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. You see, David thought that this was talking about his son Solomon. So he got all the plans together and said, I can't build the house. He thought God didn't let him build the house because he was a man of war. So he said, Solomon, I'm going to get you to build the house. So David got it all ready and passed the plans on to Solomon. But really, who was this talking about when God said, he shall build a house? That was actually talking about Jesus. Right? So Jesus is known as the son of David, just like Solomon was. So we're going to learn a bit about King Solomon as well in the upcoming weeks. Well, Jesus came, he died on the cross for us, and if we believe on him, we are part of this house that Jesus is building. And what's amazing about Jesus in the New Testament is he is known as the son of David. So even though David won this great victory against Goliath, and then he did something terrible, he committed adultery and he killed that woman's husband, but because he had the right attitude when he was confronted, he confessed and forsook that sin to the Lord, God still used him. And in fact, Jesus Christ our Lord is known by David's name, the son of David. All right, so we've got an activity for you today. Hopefully it's a fun one. So we're going to go up, we're going to go to the back, and I'm going to explain what we're going to do today. We're going to do a bit of slingshotting ourselves like David did. Okay, so probably not a something your parents want you to know, but this is going to be fun. Okay, so let's go to the back. Take a seat. <laughs> 